Joining me now is Sean Kunkin, president and CEO of Dolly Varden Silver. Great to see you again, sir. Thanks for having me. We saw each other in May in New York. Yes. Uh, we had a conversation then. So let's pick up on that and remind everybody about this, this large, uh, undeveloped uh, silver project you have in, in Western Canada, one of the biggest on the continent. You've been busy increasing the size of the resource. So just to get everybody sure. up to speed. Yeah, so I like to look at it, we're, we're in the heart of the Golden Triangle, a very famous mining camp. Uh, the largest, world's largest gold producers are operating two mines. Uh, so Newmont's operating the Bruce Jack mine and the Red Chris mine. Um, so we've identified 140 million ounces of high grade silver. And we've had some significant new discoveries recently that's attracted a corporate shareholder, um, the world's fastest growing established silver producer, Hecla Mining, to increase their stake in our company by 50%. Right. So well, let's go there then in terms of the share ownership. You've got uh, Fury Gold, correct, at 22%. Hecla's now at roughly 16 Sprott's at 9%. And uh, you've actually, you've, you're very upfront about it, saying, you know, we're, we're an inevitable takeover candidate. So is it as simple as proving it out and getting knocks on the door? And, and if so, what's the timeline, do you think? So the, the way I look at it is, how do we increase our value for shareholders? You know, how do we maximize those returns in a, in a safe way, in a disciplined way? And if, if that means we're the developer, we're happy to put on that hat, but I think the most cost-effective delivering delivery of returns for our shareholders is through cost-effective exploration that increases the mineral inventory and without having to take on the, the time of a build, the risk of a build, the dilution of a build, I think a takeover is probably the best way to go. Okay, so you're, you're busy uh, determining the size of the project. You've also said you're trying to determine the relationships between the deposits. So what yeah. are you learning? That's a good question. So my, my goal when I first came into Dolly Varden was what, what did we start with? We started with what was the richest silver mine in the British Empire. We started with what was Canada's third largest silver mine. So we had these four deposits and through raising $75 million that's, and we're 47% institutionally owned, and that's by institutions like Fidelity and Sprott and others, and then going to Eric Sprott as a 9% shareholder, Hecla and another corporate own about 37%. So only 7% of the company is in the hands of the public. So we've raised uh, an, a, you know, a significant amount of capital for a micro cap, and then we've done some M&A, and we've done some exploration, and some of the questions that we're setting out to answer are, the seven deposits that we've identified, two of them are past producing mines. Is there a relationship in between them? And we've got a set of drill holes that are pending. We're up in the home stake part of the trend where we just released 93 meters of 357 grams of silver, which was the best silver intercept the project's ever seen. And the project's been around for hundred years. Up in that area, there's two deposits that are 350 meters apart, our Vice President of Exploration, Rob Van Egmont, believes those deposits, there could be a relationship. They could be connected. He describes it as what could be an S-like fold. And so we're seeing this high-grade mineralization at Homestake, Maine, where we drilled 25 meters of 46 grams of gold, and then in that in that gap zone, we've got results pending. And then on the other side of the gap, we just drilled some credible, you know, 100 meter, 12 ounce intercepts. So, those are some nice visuals you're giving us there too. It gives us a good idea. Uh, so, uh, when can we expect an uh, updated uh, mineral resource estimate? And do you have any rough numbers in your head of what it might look like? So, the way I look at this company is we've created a must-own silver net got 140 million ounces of high-grade silver in the heart of the Golden Triangle with some great shareholders that's a takeover candidate. Um, can it be a 200 million ounce project? Can it be a 300 million ounce project? Those are the questions we're setting out to answer in terms of resource estimates. The 140 million ounces that I cite is as of 2019. We've put about $40 million into the ground 
and we're and and I, I envision another forty thousand meters of drilling, so another sixteen million dollars spend, and then I think from that body of information, let's put out a new MRE, call it end of Q1 2025. Okay. So a year from now, after another season of drilling, let's see what we have. Wow. And then let's make a decision. And again, I believe silver companies, um, the Explore Co. mineral inventory developer category are valued based on their grade, their location, their size of the endowment. And in, in situ value subscribe to that resource, Right now, we're trading at about a dollar an ounce in the ground, and we're multiplying that by the 140 million ounces we've identified. If we can take it to 200, if we can take it to 300, but also, as the price of silver appreciates, when I took over Dolly Varn, the price of silver was 16 or $17. Those same ounces that we have were only valued at 37 cents per silver ounce in the ground. Right. So we've already seen a re-rating because of the size, because of the grade, because of the quantity. So it's not uncommon for these ounces, if we find more of them, even without silver rising, to get a re-rating. And just quickly, Sean, to wrap it up here with the price of silver, you mentioned that. You said something before, and you, you can't take credit for it, but if you strip out the price spike in 1980 when the Hunt brothers tried to corner the market, strip out the, the big spike in 2011 where it nearly went to 50, uh, and then you look at silver over that time horizon, it's actually done very well, so investors should not necessarily be disappointed, and it's not, it, it's incrementally been moving up. I think, yeah, so it was Chris Marcus from Arcadia Economics <laughs> okay. who said, take out the two spike highs and you've got a chart that is moving from the bottom left to the top right. So I think silver's tracked gold very well if we look at it through that lens. But I also think that we've got an 80 to one silver to gold ratio and you know what we've experienced in the past and in the recent past, like 2020, is silver lags gold and then outperforms. So I think the opportunity for investors is going, okay, a bull market is forming here, gold is leading, but silver is so undervalued on a relative basis that it's going to have to dramatically, violently outperform what we've seen in gold. And that isn't and then and then let's factor in something else here, which is you go back a decade the silver market, only 3% of silver that was being mined was consumed in solar, which is forecasted to be 50% of all new mined silver. So just one application. So that's exciting because that industrial component wasn't here even a decade ago. Sorry, just lastly, that's 50%. When's that projected to get? To get in, the, in the coming decades. Coming decades. So we've gone from 3% to about 15% today, yeah. but it's growing rapidly mm. on that trajectory. Um, but again, I really believe it won't be the industrial demand that takes silver higher. It'll be investment demand. Right, right. Great stuff. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good stuff, Sean. Kun Kun. President and CEO of Dolly Varden Silver.